Hello, guys. Um, I'm Jose, and this is tutorial number 11 on vectors. Um, okay, so I'm going to start from tutorial number 9. Um, if you've done that one, um, you'll have something like this, right? Um, we have a canvas where every frame we're adding new elements to the screen. Um, and a little bit before that, we had a version that is grayed out here where we initiated 100 elements and they just were out and we don't keep adding elements to the screen. So we're gonna go back a little bit to that version. Um, so I'm gonna or remove completely these two lines here. Uh, and I'm gonna ungrade this stuff. By the way, I'm preparing a website where I will post all the code as well from all the tutorials that we've been doing and we're gonna try to upload them as well to the open processing website. Um, okay, so at this stage we will be having a hundred balls just bouncing around, right? Um, I did tutorial number 10 between 9 and this one uh, in order to just have access to external libraries. Why do I want to do that? Because um, I don't want to use the P vector library, and I want to use uh, use Toxic Leaf's vector library, uh, that is a little bit more powerful and would allow us to maintain um, consistency of the vector library that we will use over more complex operations. So I, I, I will be doing some tutorials uh, specifically on Toxic Leaf's, and for that we will need um, to use the vector 3D library from Toxic. So let's import that. Most of the stuff you will be able to do them with a normal with a normal PV vector library, but there's some operations that are not in there. So I mean, it's your call. You can just follow the Toxic Leaps version, or or try to see the similar version of how we, you would do that in P vector. But the basic is the same. So let's check that library is uh, loaded properly. So if we don't have any problems with this line over here, if you're not getting an error message saying there's some problem with the package, um, you should be all right. Uh, we can do vectors now. Um, so um, if you do have problems with the library, just go to tutorial number 10 and check how we install the library. So that's very important. So let's look at the class uh, that we have right now. The class, it's written without any vectors. It's just a uh, float x and y, uh, and speed x and y as well. So we're going to try to include vectors here and replace what we had with vectors, right? So for that, how do we define a vector and what is a vector? A vector is a point, it's just a point in space, but this point also contains two things. It contains um, information of magnitude and directionality. So we'll, meet, we'll see what that means. It's basically, you can understand it as an arrow. Um, an arrow that has its um, location in the 0, 0 coordinate, and then it uh, points out to the position that we will point out in this way. So let's do a vector and we'll start understanding this idea a little bit more uh, clearly. So in this case, because we're using the vector 3D library, we have to specify vector 3D. And I'm going to say lock referring location equals new vector 3D. Um, at this stage, it could be anything, 0 0.0.0, 0 .0, 0 .0, right? So this is a point. Uh, okay, we could be using, because we're do, doing stuff in 2D, um, we could specify that it's a 2D vector, vector 2D that is part of the library as well. Uh, but I'm used to actually defining all the time vector 3D, and um, because I, you never know when you actually will need that third dimension, so you will just not call the set. Uh, um, component of the vector, right? So let's stick with the vector 3D for now. Uh, we can check that this is not producing anything yet. Um, so we need to change 
the information of our class now not to be just float x and y, but just one vector that will have a component x and a component y. Let's try to do that. So we'll change these two floats for just one vector. Vector begin underscore location. So we're gonna do the same operation that we have done before, where location equals underscore location. And in this way, the vector location will be visible all over our script. <laughs> Let's define another vector as well that we will call velocity, okay? This or speed, just to be consistent um, with the names that we have been given before. The vector speed will be a new vector 3D of if we look at here, this represents the component x of our vector, and this represents the component y. In this case, we can actually put something, I will put something very simple again, like 1, 0, 0. This means that it has its, the speed in x is 1, and the speed in y is 0, right? And because we're not using set, um, we're leaving it in zero as well. So how do we actually start including some of these elements that we had already? Let's say let's grade them out and we will make the version that it's um, vector based and then slowly um, bringing them back. So before for instance if we look at the function um, display that is here we were using the x coordinate and the y coordinate, right? Our float x and float y. Because now we will be defining it as a vector that is just one entity, we can say location dot x. This is, is giving an access to the x part of the vector. So the, the dot again is giving us, we are opening that uh, vector class and the vector class has location x, y and z and a few functions that we can use. So um, this is the way of doing it. So we're going to say also location dot y, right? Um, so at this stage, we have a, the display function that is working with the vector information instead of the information x and y that we have uh, provided before. So I'm going to gray out these variables in order to just be sure that we're not using that anymore. Um, and of course, if I try to run this, the problem will be that our constructor is saying, wait a minute, you're providing two floats instead of providing one vector. That is what you have changed now. So we need to provide a vector here as, um, as where this ball will start. So we're gonna define one vector here. Uh, I will call it origin, right? Equals new vector 3D. Uh, and if I say something like 300, comma 300, so zero. This means that we are defining a point in the middle of the screen, right? So because our screen is 600 by 600, 300, comma 300 is like the center. And we're generating a hundred balls that are located in that same spot. For that, we will also need to change all this to here with origin. And this would work, but we will have three a uh, hundred balls located in the same place, right? So that's not very useful. Let's just do one for now, and then we will go back to the idea of a higher population. So at this stage, what are we having? Um, okay, or we need to gray out some of this. Um, what I'm going to do here, I haven't showed this before, uh, it's a multiple comment. Right, 
So by typing this, like slash and star, you can actually create out multiple lines. And because these functions has been have been written with um, our float x and float uh, y and speed x and speed y, and uh, they wouldn't they won't work for now. So we're gonna just work again with only display, right? So we're removing all the functionality of our class and we're gonna re-implement it with a vector logic. I'm doing this in order for you to understand that it's very clear, I mean, it's very similar. We could have done it with floats, but because we are using vectors now, we will be able to do uh, operations in a much uh, nicer way instead of just doing so much math. So let's check if that's working. Right, so we have just one ball in the middle of the screen because specify the vector in the middle of the screen, right? This is the position where it starts and it's using the location of the vector to display that screen, that ball in the screen. So let's cut this thing here and put it here. So now we're activating the move function. The move function is as quite simple. Uh, it was saying every frame um, the location in X gets added as speed, right? And the location in Y, we add the speed in Y as well. So how would we do that in vectors? The vector version of that would be location dot add self speed. Right? This is just one line that is doing both things because vector math, uh, the way it's operating, it's adding the vector of speed that is a very small vector aiming to the right side. So it's one unit in X. Uh, it's adding it to the location vector. So we have a very tiny, very, very tiny vector that every frame will be added to the location vector. And basically it's doing the same thing that we were doing separately, X plus X, Y plus Y. And here we will see how, if we call the function move as well, and I need to gray out these two lines. <coughs> you can see that what we are doing is adding one X every frame. But because our speed is one unit in X, and we are through vector math, this is the keyword to add a this vector to this vector, right? We will see very slowly like a many uh, uh, operations that we can do with vector math with toxic leaves library or this is the same way that p vector works. So adding vectors, right? We're adding the vector of speed to the vector of location. So that's fairly simple. Let's try to include the idea of the bounce. Again, we have to uh, activate that bit of the code. And in here, we will have to exchange our x by location.x. And I'm going to copy paste here wherever we have x, it's location.x, wherever we have y, it's location.y. And wherever we have speed x, we're going to say speed dot x. Because speed is also a vector now, we have speed dot x, speed dot x, speed dot y in this case. And speed dot y. Right? So the same idea in this in, in this case it's uh, it's exactly the same as before we have to decompose uh, the vector in order to just affect one part of it and multiply that part of it by minus one but often we will be doing operations like this one where we multiply and normalize the vector and increase its size and different stuff like that um, and the last bit of the code that we need to activate is the gravity. Um, so we can actually 
do uh, another vector here that would, would be called gravity. And we were using 0 0.2, right? So, right, this, we're, I'm defining a very small vector of gravity pointing down in the screen, right? In the y-axis. I'm going to grade this down, and I'm going to say speed dot at self. Gravity is the vector gravity that we have defined now. So let's try to include that as well in our script. So now we have the same functionality that we had before, but implementing a vector class. Um, so let's get rid of all the um, the older version. all this stuff. So we're having three vectors, one of location, speed, and gravity. And that's the same class with vector implementation. From here, we are very close to start developing some um, vector operations that would allow us to do, for instance, theorem behavior, flocking, um, any kind of attractor, uh, following an attractor, or many other kind of complex behaviors, that it's we can do them much easily with a um, vector map. So that's why we are introducing this class to be now based on a loc um, on a vector location and a vector speed as well, and we will take it from there. Um, in order to have also what we had before, I'm going to add again a hundred here balls, but I don't want to, them to be all in the same place, so I will say random width. And random 200. So I will be sure that all the balls start randomly in the top of the, sc uh, of the screen. And also the vector of speed, what we had before, we could say random minus two and two. And here random minus two, minus two. So each ball will start with a random, the same that we had before, basically. You can go back to the code and check it, but we're defining the dx component of the velocity. It's um, random value between minus 2 and 2, and the same with the y component of the vector. So at this stage, we should be having exactly the same what we had before, but um, working with vectors. So we'll leave it here, and the next stage we'll see a little bit more complex vector operations, um, aiming to, to get flocking.